Hey everyone, Riley with Dark Arrow. We just got our new propeller in the mail from Airmaster Propellers. We're gonna be using this on the Dark Arrow 1 prototype. I'm gonna tell you more about it and what makes it unique. This is the AP 533 propeller made by Airmaster Propellers in New Zealand. High level, it's a three-bladed prop. It's constant speed and it's electrically actuated. And it's specifically set up to be paired with the UL520 IS engine on high-speed aircraft. Uh, I have the propeller and the engine mounted up here so you can see the fit up and the whole firewall forward package. I'm gonna be focusing on the propeller today. Uh, if you're interested specifically in the engine, we made a dedicated video about that. I'll link it somewhere up above. Uh, but yeah, let's focus on the propeller today. So as I mentioned, this is specifically set up to be paired with the UL520IS engine. Uh, the big thing there is that this propeller can spin fast enough to allow our engine to make full rated power during takeoff and climb. UL engines make max power around 3000 to 3200 RPM. And a lot of the constant speed props you see on the market top up between 2700 and 2800 RPM because that's where most conventional airplane engines redline at. Along with the RPM capability, it's set up to handle the amount of power produced by our engine. This prop is rated for use on a 200 horsepower engine, which is what the UL520IS makes at maximum power. The three blades on the propeller are specifically shaped to make them well suited for high speed flight, which is what the Dark Air One is designed for. The blades are composite and they have a stainless steel leading edge for erosion protection against bugs and raindrops and dirt that might ding up the leading edges of the blades. The blades are made by Sensenich here in the US and the propeller diameter is 67 inches. Now we might end up playing around with that a little bit when we get into flight testing, uh, trimming the blades back to optimize more for high speed flight, but I think we have a good starting point at least. We spent a lot of time talking with Airmaster early on to uh, get a good prop that would work out of the box for the Dark Air One prototype. And I think this is gonna work. So I'm really excited to get into flight testing and see how this performs. So I mentioned that this propeller is constant speed. What does that mean? Well, basically the blades on this propeller can change angle to allow the engine to maintain a specific RPM throughout a whole bunch of different flight regimes. This is sort of like the transmission on your car. So when you're starting out in your car and accelerating, you start in a low gear. And then as you accelerate, you shift into higher gears to keep the engine from overspeeding. Similar situation exists on propeller driven aircraft. Uh, when you're starting out accelerating down the runway, you want the engine to make maximum power and you want the propeller to generate maximum thrust so that you minimize your takeoff distance. So your low gear on your propeller corresponds to a very shallow pitch on the propeller. But then as you accelerate and pick up airspeed, the angle on the blade needs to increase so that the blade takes a bigger bite out of the air and keeps the engine from overspeeding. So basically when you change pitch on the propeller, it allows the propeller to maintain optimum performance throughout a broad range of flight speeds. What this means for the pilot is that with a constant speed propeller, you can get a shorter takeoff roll, better rate of climb, and a little bit better efficiency in cruise compared to a fixed pitch propeller. The trade-off is more weight, complexity, and cost. Let's talk about how this pitch change mechanism works. Each blade is mounted to the central hub on a rotating collar, which allows the blade to pivot. This collar is then threaded and locked into the hub. At the very base of each blade is an offset cam, which fits into a slot in the sliding block at the very center of the hub. The sliding block is mounted on a drive screw. You can imagine that as the screwdrive rotates, it will drive this sliding block forward and aft. And since it's connected to the cam on each blade, it will cause the blades to pivot. The screw itself is driven by an electric servo motor mounted at the front end of the hub. The electric motor receives power through brushes and slip rings mounted on the back of the spinner. There are a series of limit switches and travel stops within the hub that tell the propeller controller when the blades are at the far limits of their angular position. 
The whole system is 12 volt, so it's compatible with the existing electrical system on the rest of the aircraft. The fact that it's electrically actuated is a little bit unique because most common constant speed propellers like what you see on conventional Lycoming or Continental airplane engines are hydraulically controlled, meaning that they use pressurized oil to adjust propeller pitch. But the Airmaster prop is electric though. And the pitch is changed by the pilot in the cockpit with the propeller controller. A lot of the control is automated though with presets for different flight regimes. The takeoff setting is going to adjust the pitch to maintain around 3000 RPM, which is peak power for the UL engine. The climb setting will maintain 2800 RPM, which is maximum continuous RPM, and the cruise setting will maintain 2600 RPM. As I mentioned, these are all preset from the factory, but all these settings can be changed. You can manually fine tune the prop speed and flight with the hold setting on the prop controller and the pitch adjustment switch. There's also a feathering function. The only time you would be using this on the Dark Arrow 1 would be in an emergency if you had an engine out and you are gliding to the runway. Feathering the blades turns the blades into the oncoming airflow, which minimizes drag and maximizes how far the airplane can glide. This would be mounted on your instrument panel and it uses a standard two and a quarter inch diameter cutout and then it's just held in place with four fasteners. The pitch adjustment switch would also be mounted on your instrument panel next to your prop controller. All the wiring harnesses to connect the controller and hub and slip rings and brushes are included with the propeller, which is really nice. It's all plug and play, and in that regard, you don't need to make any wiring harnesses. You just plug the different modules into each other. As long as we're talking about what's included with the propeller, maybe I should back up a little bit and discuss the whole propeller package since it's definitely worth mentioning. The prop is shipped in two boxes, one for the blades and one for the hub and the blades and hub are all really well packaged with bubble wrap or foam padding to protect them while they're in transit. Everything is pre-packed with grease, so you don't have to worry about that when you assemble them. I should also mention that the whole assembly is pre-balanced from the factory. Each blade is matched to a specific port on the propeller hub, and this is stamped into the hub and into the blade, so you wanna make sure you match them up when you assemble them. The blades get torqued into their corresponding ports with a special wrench, which is included in the package. The assembly procedure is all documented in the manuals, which are pretty detailed and come with the propeller assembly. You also get the prop controller and wiring harnesses, which I mentioned earlier. The brushes and slip ring assembly is included with the prop, along with the prop bolts, which allow you to attach it to the prop shaft extension at the end of the engine crankshaft. Including the prop bolts is actually a really nice detail because once you get your prop in the mail, you get all excited and the first thing you want to do is assemble it and mount it to the engine. And the last thing you want to do is be trying to hunt down the proper size and length bolts only to realize you don't have them and you need to order them and then wait a few days for them to show up. We have a small extension mounted back here in between the slip ring mounting plate and the hub. This is a three quarter inch long extension and that allows us to have the uh, spinner bulkhead independent of the slip ring mounting plate. So the spinner bulkhead is going to sit in between this gap here and fill up this gap. Uh, we ended up using our own spinner rather than Airmaster spinner just because we wanted our spinner to match our cowling geometry. Uh, we thought that we might have to make some modification to our spinner bulkhead so we wanted this slip ring mounting plate uh, independent of that so that we're not making large modifications to this when we modify our spinner bulkhead. That leads me into our next steps for the propeller installation. So we've got the prop all fitted up to the crankshaft. That looks good, but now we need to fit up the spinner. And in order to do that, I'm gonna to have to make some cutouts in the spinner so that it can clear and fit around the prop blades. I have a CAD model of the hub and I'm gonna add in the propeller blades to the model to see how much of the spinner I need to remove. We also need to mount up the spinner bulkheads. We already have the aft bulkhead built, but we also need a forward bulkhead to help stabilize this big spinner. We held off on making the forward bulkhead until we had the prop in hand just so that we could play around with it in person before committing to making a mold for the forward spinner bulkhead. We'll be releasing some more videos soon showing some updates on that work, so be sure to subscribe to our channel if you want to stay up to date on that as well as the rest of the Dark Arrow project. That's an overview of the propeller we're going to be using on the Dark Arrow 1. I tried to include as much useful information as possible in this video, but I'm sure I missed something. So if you have a question or comment, leave it in the comments below and we'll continue our discussion about the propeller there. Uh, other than that, thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next video. No.